I've been told by everybody up on this roof that they're all off the roof. I am on the roof of Exposure 4. Got fire through the roof of the 5 million in the entire rear section. Please, I was never given the payday. Has you been accounted for? Okay. 6.0B, that's the payday. 6.0B. I'm uh, here. We got a fire. One and a half story, single family dwelling. Fire shown from the second floor. Give me a second alarm on this. See up there, top floor. I got people hanging out the top floor windows with a baby. Commercial building. Uh, a lot of fire, a lot of smoke. Go ahead and strike a third alarm on my orders on this. We got people on the front fire escape here with windows fences below them. We need somebody up there. Yeah, let them know we got a job. I'm pulling up now. Second alarm, I got a one-story single-family frame, heavy fire showing from the attic. So we're using all hands. We got one line stretched, fire on the fourth floor, second line being stretched, primary switches are underway. Hey, welcome back to our Fire Engineering Podcast, The Command Post. I'm Chief Rick Lasky, along with my best buddy, Chief John Salka, and we've got another great show lined up for you today. Uh, maybe a little uh, shot in the arm uh, for, for some, maybe a little... Uh, uh, career checker for some others, but um, John, let, let, you know, how about we, we spend a little bit of time here talking about how we, how we got here, how we got to where we're at. I mean, you've got 40 plus years. I've got 40 plus years. Um, you know, you're still volunteering. I'm still volunteering with our volunteer departments. Uh, I think the question comes up a lot is, you know, we've already talked about how do you get into the job and, you know, and, and uh, what to do once you get in and all that. But, how do you get to a point where you've got time on a job and you're still into it? Um, uh, you know, with the mentors we've had, uh, you know, you're, you're coming up, uh, next FDIC is right around the corner and, uh, you're this year's recipient of the Tom Brennan lifetime achievement award. And I know you're very modest about that. So I, I I'll, I'm going to go ahead and say it. It's, it's pretty freaking awesome. To know my buddy's getting that award. Um, uh, but you've worked hard to get where, you know, to get where you're at. I mean, 40 years and, so I guess maybe that's the topic is, you know, how, how we got here. And, and I guess maybe a good subtitle would be uh, um, how, how do you get into the job and, and how do you stay into the job once you're there? You know, buddy? I, throw yeah, that and you know what? It, 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 again, you and I are out and about and whether it's on our own, whether we're together, whether we're FDIC, Firehouse, all the big shows, the little shows, the, the annual shows that we go to, Eddie Frederick's training days and, you know, all sorts of places. We, you know, we meet and greet and talk with and go out to dinner and share meals with and, and do seminars with so many, so many people like, like, like a lot of guys like us, there, there's a, there's a crowd of guys, in, you know, in the fire service that are out there doing what we're doing, you know, yeah, less time, same time, more time. But the point is I can remember a number of times and, and I know you're going to agree with me. I can't tell you how many times, you know, not, not dozens and dozens, but, Plenty of times people have come up to me after a show at lunchtime at lunch break on the way to the airport. Hey, chief, listen, I would love to, I would love to somewhere be, you know, where you are, you know, with, with, with 20, 30 years in a fire service, maybe retired, maybe still working, maybe traveling around, doing a little bit of teaching. I do some local teaching now. I'm a County fire instructor. Or I teach it on, I teach it on department's Academy and, you know, like any tips, any, any ideas on what I should be doing, maybe what I shouldn't be doing and stuff like that. that. That's a common question. I'm sure you've heard it and I've heard it and I've tried to answer it, you know, a couple of times, certainly there's no <clears throat> finite or limited number of do this, do this, but make sure you don't do that. But I, but I think both you and I, and, and obviously there's nobody else on this show, but you and I, but, and, and I'm sure some other people, you know, folks like, you know, Vinny Dunn and Brunacini and, and, and a lot of the people that we know that are out there doing this or have done this, there's probably some good advice. There's a, a probably a good list of do's and don'ts, which I think would be some interesting stuff for us to cover tonight about not just your fire service existence, but maybe getting out there and doing a little bit of teaching, doing a little bit of writing. You know, I, I remember, I remember asking Vinny Dunn, hey, Vinny, I'm interested in writing an article. Well, well, where do I start? I remember talking to Vinny Dunn about that at a <laughs> seminar, you know, and he's looking at me like, you know, who are you? You know, and I remember his advice to me. Vinny Dunn's advice to me was, you want to write an article? Where, where do you work? I was like in 11 Chalk or Rescue 3. He said, listen, come up with something that you know about. Think of a topic that you know about. Don't write anything you don't know about. You see, he was very adamant about that. He said, come up with something you know about and come and then sit down with a pen and a paper and write 10, 10 points down, 10 points that relate to that topic. You know, power saw operations, you know, how to test a saw, the different kind of blades how to transport the saw, you know, how, how to cut, how to, how to cut with metal, how to cut. And anyway, he said, come up with 10 points 
He said, there's your, there's your 10 paragraphs. There's your article. There's your article. Power store operations in a fire service, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there you go. You wrote an article. And I, I remember that, you know, and it's and you know, obviously I've written many, many, many articles since then. And I've given that same exact story, that same exact advice to lots and lots of people, including everybody that's listening right now, just got that piece of advice. And it's not mine. It's Vinnie Dunn's advice. Come up with something you know about. 10 points, put it on a piece of paper, write a paragraph, 10 paragraphs, you get an article. If it's interesting enough, that they, they, there's your next seminar. They, there's your 10 or 20 PowerPoint slides as well. And there's your next little training seminar or podcast or whatever venue it is that you've chosen to, to pursue. Well, and, and we, you remember we used to do a, a class at FDIC titled So Online, So You Want to Write for Fire Engineering or you want to, you want to teach at FDIC. It'd be, you know, Diane, I did it a couple of times and Glennie and all them about just what you said. You know, a lot of a lot of guys will come up like they do a class or whatever. Say, you know, I've always thought about writing an article. You know, I want to get and and first of all, you admire their enthusiasm. You know, because most of them, it's not about the attention. It's about they want to make a difference. They want to get out there Absolutely. and talk about something. Absolutely, it's not about looky looky me. And you know, I say the same thing, John. You say, I say, find something. First of all, find something that 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 you like. You talked about you have the background, the knowledge. And don't, I think you hit it perfectly. You said, don't try to teach something you don't know. There's guys out there that you know, all the years we've been doing the uh, uh, submissions, the uh, calls for papers for FDIC, how many times did you see somebody submit a, a submission for a class? They want to teach the, you know, the biggest conference in the world and they want to teach a class on company officer leadership. And then you look at their bio and God bless them, but they're a firefighter. And I'm like, Okay, I understand what you want to talk about. You've got some good points, but how 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 can you how can you tell me you want to teach a class on company officer leadership when you you're not a company officer? Do you, do you know what I'm saying? I mean, just right, you know, right. I would never try to teach something that I wasn't well versed in. I would never try to write something that I wasn't well versed in. And I don't want to say that, that some of these people are posers because that's not necessarily the word. It's just right, but that topic. I mean, that that fact, that piece of advice from Vinnie Dunn. To me and yeah. me to the folks that talk to me about it, that is uh, un undebatable. Not there's no discussion about that. That is the first solid rule. You got to write or teach or talk or or do a podcast only on something you're really familiar with. That somebody could just throw a question. Somebody could throw a question at, at you. Not even about the ten points you mentioned. About the eleven point, the thing that they thought about. And you'll have an answer for them because you do know about the topic, right? Well, exactly, and and you know. And, and, Sometimes you got to start out a little small. You got to go do a little conference, a little weekend thing, or on your own department. That's what I did, John. I started teaching hazmat to my own people at my own department. And then I started teaching it, you know, for the region and then for the state. And then, you know, when I, I started teaching Saving Our Own, I was teaching it as a training chief, first off, before I ever thought about teaching it nationally. Um, I think sometimes people want, it's like the people that want to, you know, they, they want to run for mayor instead of running for city council first. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're going for the big shot where maybe you should start out and understand what you're doing. Right, well, right. I think you got to, you got to, you got to build it. Well, here, here, let me, I was gonna, let me jump back to this one point I want to make here before I say what I'm going to say. I always tell people too, John, is, is find something, I don't want to say niche, but first of all, you got to read the magazine. As long as we're talking real quicker about writing articles, you, you have to read the magazine because I've had people just submit articles to me and say, hey, take a look at this, chief. And I look at it and I go, do you read the magazine? <laughs> you know, John Salka just wrote about this or so-and-so just wrote, you know, I mean, you know, they're not going to turn around and publish an article on this particular thing you're doing at SCBA when a guy just did it a few months ago. You know, I mean, God right, bless you, right. but you have to read the magazine once in a while, just like you have to look at the classes you're teaching. So find something that's got a little bit different, either a different spin on something or a new way of doing something old you know, or bring us something, you know, back that hasn't been written about in a long time, but you got to pay attention to what's out there first off and, and and then make sure that you do your homework and that you're well-versed in what you're talking about, but go ahead, buddy. Oh, and, and another thing, I think it's even a couple of steps, it might even be a step or two before that. And that's important is like, I, I know we, you mentioned when you're talking about the title or the subtitle, you know, of, of this podcast, it's like, you know, you can be on the job or you can be in the job and, you know, into the job. And, and you know, that's the saying, right? You know, obviously, uh, Chief D. Bernardo talks about Joey D. saying that. Now that you're on the job, get into the job. We say that in the FDMY all the time. 
And I want to be clear. I know guys that were on the job that were not into the job. Oh, yeah. They were not. They never attended se uh, seminars. They didn't even know there was any magazines to read. They didn't know there was Firehouse Magazine, Fire Engineering Magazine. They didn't know anything about any monthly magazines out there, fire service related. They really didn't know that there were shows. And you and I both know that there are literally dozens of shows, maybe dozens and dozens every single month year round by all sorts of people, right? So let's get back to the topic, being on the job and being into the job. I know guys that, I, that, are, that I'm personal friends with that were on the FDNY that studied, that made promotion, that ran fantastic training drills inside the firehouse, that were excellent strategists, excellent company officers, excellent firefighters, excellent chiefs, and were not into the job. They weren't buffs. They didn't have an extra jacket with a, with a Maltese cross <laughs> on it. They didn't listen to a scanner. They didn't have NYC, you know, 911 or and they were great guys and they were great firefighters. So I'm not taking anything away from them. But, but, but I think what you and I are both saying, and I think we get a lot of agreement from a lot of people, once you're into the job, you know, I, obviously the folks that I'm talking about were into the job within, within the department, within their working hours and stuff. But if you're really into the job, if you're into the fire service, that's when you expand. you got to be outside of your 40 hours a week, your 24-hour shifts in the firehouse or whatever, whatever it is that you do, fire marshal, firefighter, building what, once you get out of that and realize that there's a national fire service out there, there are magazines that people write from cities all over the country, different ranks, different ideas on different things, photographs about building construction and, and tool usage and, and strategy and tactics. And, and then you realize that, that not only there are magazines, but there are seminars. There are seminars where 30,000 people flood into, uh, you know, different cities or, you know, Indianapolis and, and all the other big shows. That it takes it up not one notch, it takes it up a few notches, and then suddenly you're in a you're in a different arena, you're in a different realm. You're not just a member of the fire service. Now you're a part, you're really into it, and you're in the national fire service. And that's what you and I did years and years ago. That's what Harvey introduced me to. Harvey said, Hey John, why don't you write an article? I was a young backstep firefighter in Rescue Three. I mean, it was Rescue Three, it was a pretty fancy place to be, it was yeah, a pretty yeah. special place, but it was still, I was still. Not just, but just a firefighter riding in the big box with Jay Jonas and John Norman and a bunch of other guys. And I wrote an article. It didn't never occur to me to write an article. Who's going to read this? You know, 40 years later, here I am. And, you know, obviously a lot of promotion has gone on, a lot of study, preparation and a job. But a lot of outside stuff has gone on, too. I started writing for Harvey, you know, regularly. And then I started going to Baltimore with him. And one thing led to another, to another. You know, and here we are, authors and lecturers and, and guys that travel around trying to at least have a positive impact on the fire service. And there were so many things that affected it. And one of the big ones was the one I just talked about, getting into the job and sort of expanding outside your little familiar arena of the tuxedo fire department or the Wichita fire department, wherever it is you work. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think you, you broke it into, actually, it sounds like three groups. You've got the, you've got the group of guys and gals that are on the job. They're into the job in the in the firehouse. You know, they they right. they take care of their shifts. They, they look, they show up on time, they work their asses off, they take care of their engine, their truck, whatever. They they clean the firehouse, they train, they get promoted, they mentor, they do all that. They're the kind of employee that you want as a chief, right? You want someone that's going to get there. And it, you know, we don't like we said, we don't want any job hunters, you know, we don't want anybody here for a job. We want somebody who wants to make a difference, and they're making a difference in their own way. And those are great folks, and there's there's literally Thousands and thousands and thousands. If you think there's 1.2 million firefighters in the United States alone, let alone our our, our family in Canada, um, they're out there. I mean, they're they're there. Then you've got you've got the the group that you know they're 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 like the next notch up where they're they're teaching, they're they're doing some conferences on the weekends, they're writing an article here and there and all that stuff. And then you got the ones that are just you know. And I think we kind of worked our way up into it where. You're on the road all the time. You're writing all the time. You're teaching all the time. You're you're you know consulting all the time and so on and so forth. And I think all three groups have great people in them. You know the the the, the circle of friends we run with, like you said, uh, you know the Bobby Haltons and the Vinny Duns, and you know you talk about Harvey, God rest his soul, and you know all the different folks that we hang with. But and now let me go back. You know, God, we almost should have had him with us, but. When we talk about how we got to, to where, you know, how we got here, if we will, okay, I love telling the story of Eddie Buchanan. Eddie Buchanan's our good friend, right, John? Eddie Buchanan from Hanover County, Virginia. And in, in the mid-90s, 
um, he invited us out from U of I, from the Fire Service Institute, to teach Saving Our Own in Hanover County. And they picked us up at the airport, Eddie and, and Greg Martin, his, his partner there. And, um, you know, they were telling us, John, about, you know, we have hundreds of, you know, firefighters. We've got career, we've got volunteer. And I'm like, God, how do you, how do you do that? How do you, you know, with, with the volleys, you know, when you're constantly hiring new ones and not make the old guys go through the same stuff. And so, John, he, he explained his training program. And I said, I, my exact words to him, I don't know if you, you've heard me tell a story, I think. I'm, I'm like, you need, you need to do an art of of fire engineering. And Eddie's, Eddie's exact words were, nobody wants to hear somebody from, from the middle of nowhere, you know, talk. I said, no, actually they do. They, they want to hear from you. You've got a great, great point. And, and I, I told him one of the things I learned from, from Diane, Diane Rothschild from fire engineering was you need to write to the whole fire service, not just the FDNY, just not Chicago, just not Houston or Dallas. There's a whole fire service out there. You need to write to all of them. So, uh, John, I talked him into it. I remember, you remember when people used to have fax machines or when they actually printed stuff? So we're, he's, we're going back and forth. Okay, do you have a chart? All right, let's go with a graph. Let's go to picture. Do this, 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 this. Then we submit it. Boom, the article comes out. And it was great. Then I said, Eddie, I said, uh, I want you and Greg to teach for me. Me and my buddy John Salk are doing, you know, our safety and survival program the IC. I want you to come teach. He goes, what? I said, yeah, because, you know, he took that program and developed, helped develop the program. I think made a firefighter down for Virginia. And you remember that's, well, okay, we brought him to teach with us at FDIC. Then when we had him at FDIC, I said, okay, you need to teach a class on an article you wrote. He's like, no. I said, no, you, you wrote the article. You teach for us at FDIC. Now you need to teach on the article you wrote. So he taught, he taught on the, on the, on the article. And while he was the year he was teaching, which was that following year, I had him sit down with Mark and go, okay, Eddie, now you need to do a book on what you're teaching on. So it started with us visiting with him, talking him into writing an article about what his, because I thought, God, they, they what a freaking awesome program they have in Hanover County, uh, Virginia for, for training for the volunteers and the career guys. Then come teach for us. And then write, you know, then write an art, you know, you, you did an article, then then come teach a class at FDIC on it, and then do a book on it. And Eddie skyrocketed. Eddie's Eddie's one of the most respected in the fire service. And so there's another guy we want to ask how how he got right. it. Right. And, and it's all and it's all self-generated. Obviously, you played a role in that whole thing. Obviously, you you intervened there in a couple of different times and opened some doors for him or gave him some direction. But but Eddie had to make it happen. And, oh, and yeah. of course he had to have it. <clears throat> He had to have it inside of him, too. I love telling a story about Tom Merrill, and I'll make it a short one. But, you know, I met Tom up when he was going out as chief for the volunteer fire department. And, and, and the night I met him, the first night I met him, he asked me, gee, I got a couple articles written about the volunteer fire service that I think are pretty good. You think maybe absolutely. And before you know it, you know, Harvey put one of them in firehouse.com or something like that online. And and one thing led to another. Tom, Tom is one of the most sought after volunteer oh. fire instructors, you know, the role of the volunteer fire service and the American fire service. Why? Because he asked me, he connected with me. I connected him with Harvey and then he ended up connecting with Bobby and with fire engineering. He's in, he is writing a book right now that I'm about to write the forward for about the, the professional volunteer fire department in America. He's got dozens of, of programs, each probably representing a chapter or two of the book. The point is he, he, he posed the question one night. He grabbed the guy. Oh, Chief Salker's here. Let me grab him. Oh, Chief Lasky's here. Oh, oh, Chief Buchanan's here. Oh, Chief Vinnie Dunn is here. Oh, yeah. he grabbed on somebody's coattails and said, hey, can you give me a little lift? Absolutely, brother. Come on. You pull him up onto the wagon. And, and I keep telling. If it wasn't for Harvey, I'm telling you, there's dozens, if not 20-something or maybe 30-something national instructors out there that Harvey Eisner pulled up onto the wagon. Then Harvey Eisner said, hey, why don't you write me an article? Hey, why don't you come down 1992? Why don't you come down to Firehouse Expo in Baltimore and, and do a little lecture? And 20 years later, they're, they're out there writing books and doing big room sessions at all the big shows. So, you know, the, to the answer to the question, that's how you get there. You got to pull yourself up by the bootstraps. You got to find a passing wagon named Lasky or something and, and hook onto it, you know, and Obviously, you got to put a lot of work in, too. This wasn't fun. It wasn't like you write one article and they call you up and tell you to, you know, come to the White House or something. But but you got to you, you got to start it. Well, and let me ask you this. You know, when you first started teaching, you know, and, and just locally and everything else, the feeling, John, explain the feeling. I, I know the feeling I get and the feeling I used to get, man, because like I said, I started teaching essentials, firefighter essentials, you know, the basics, you know, firefighter one, two, teaching that all the time. 
and hazmat. And I, I don't know, there, there was like an adrenaline rush I got teaching other firefighters, especially young firefighters, the stuff they needed to know that to, to, to do their jobs. And then to see them pass, get certified. It was just like, I was like, you know, I don't want, I don't even, I'm not saying it was an ego boost. I was just excited. I was like, God, this is so much. And I guess part of that, John, I want to ask you about that, about your feeling, but you know, they asked me a while back, uh, you know, for, for the time running, you know, lifetime achievement award, you know, you know, how did you get into instructing? And I said, I used to sit in the audience and watch Jack McCaslin, chief Jack McCaslin teach. And I used to watch chief Eddie Enright teach and Tommy Trevino. And I'd watch students sit on the edge of their seats, watching these guys. And just and the and the impact they had, and you know what they were they're they're regular guys, they're they're icons to me. But you know, if you sat down next to them, you'd be hey, how you doing? All this stuff, talking everything else. But just watching them, I I wanted to be part of that. I wanted to make that kind of a difference. So I, I know there's got to be that you know, there's people right now that started that were probies with you that are out there doing their own programs and writing and teaching and doing things. And I mean. Tell me about the feeling. I, you know what I'm talking about. I love that feeling of making a difference and teaching and seeing people get fired up about what they're doing. You know, it's, it's uh, I, I got to call it like one of the rewards. And we, and we certainly, we don't do this for rewards. We do it because we enjoy doing it. And we love being a part of the fire service and, and helping some other folks along, whether it be just be good technicians, good, be ta good tacticians, good strategists, good firefighters. But and then some of those people turn into instructors and writers and authors, right? Every good firefighter is not an instructor. Every good officer is not an instructor. We've, we've been through that a million times. Yeah. But the reward of being an instructor, you know, at a national fire academy or at, a, at one of the big shows or even at, at your local county county training center, right? The reward is when the one guy comes up and gets the class says, Chief, you know what? That, that was probably one of the most informative classes I've ever been to. I've, I've been wrestling with that topic for years or – you know, I'm, I'm thinking about trying to teach about that topic and you really opened my eyes or one, of, or one of a thousand other things that they could say. Sometimes it's an email. Sometimes it's just a comment after a class. And boy, do I love getting those, not to reach around and pat myself on the back. And, and, and I guess somebody listening could say, yeah, sure not. But, but really it's because you say, you know what? I, I, I did have a difference. And, and maybe that guy, just like Vinny Dunn loaded my gun for me and I got out there and wrote an article and, and, and did this and did that. Maybe, maybe I'm the first guy that this guy came up to and said, wow, you really make me want to teach. You know, you really make me want to get up there. You, the way you held the class's attention was great and stuff like that. And, and don't get me wrong. I could do a class of 200 people and one person might come up or I might do 10 of those and nobody comes up. It's not like it happens every day or dozens of times. But those little flashes, those little occasions when people come up to you before or after and say, man, oh, man, this was a this is a great day for me in my career. It, it, now I really know what I want to do. I got 10 years on a job and I, I want to get out there. I want to, I want to do what you're doing, you know, well, and and I, makes me feel good. And I want to, you just said something that I wanted to ask you because um, both you and I started out young teaching. Okay. And I think there's a lot of people out there that are well into their career or maybe they started late. So, so there's some guys and gals that, you know, they career change, whatever you've had some Marines that have done 20 years in the Marines come over to FDNY or just some people. And I, and I want to hear your, your, your thought on this, because I don't think it's ever too late. I don't care how old you are. I don't care where you come from. If you have something to offer, if you're passionate about what you do, if you want to teach or want to write, you should do it. I don't think, cause I think some guys, John are like, ah, you know, it's, the, 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 you know, it, the train passed me by a while ago. I got 25 years on here and nobody, you know, and I'm like, no, right. it's, you don't have to be one of these young guns that you see wearing the baseball hats with the headphones on doing their podcasts and all that stuff, you know. For sure. And you know what the story I already told? I'll tell it, not tell it again, but it's the same guy, Tom Merrill. Tom, there was never a Tom Merrill, Lieutenant Tom Merrill. There was never a Captain Tom Merrill out there teaching. There was never an assistant chief. Tom Merrill was going out. Was a, It was his going away party after 15 years as a chief officer in the Snyder Fire Department in upstate New York. It was his last night as chief that I went to his his racket, his going away party. That was when he said, gee, I wrote some articles. I'd love to start writing and teaching. And he was already the, the going out, the retiring chief in the department. So no, it is never too late. doesn't matter where you are in your fire service career or your fire service journey. Uh, I know guys that are, like you said, retired chiefs, and suddenly they get a little bit extra time on their hands. They say, you know what? I'm going to start writing or reading or teaching 
about the stuff I've been doing for the past 30 years. You know, and that's not to dissuade a young man or a young gal either, because I was a young firefighter with five, six years in the job when I wrote my first article, you know, for WMYF. It was an in-house right. in-house publication. Didn't go to the rest of the world. It was just just for my job. But, but, but still, it was quite an accomplishment, at least from my perspective, being in the rescue and writing an article for WMYF that was full of pages by people like Vinny Don and other chiefs at the time, you know? So whether you are in your first five years or your last five years, or whether you quit five years ago and you're, you're spending some time on a tractor or, or out fishing or traveling, you know what? Everybody's got a bank of information and experiences and things that they've done that maybe no one else has done. Put them on paper. Give, give somebody a call. You don't even need somebody to open a door for you. You can write the fire engineering. You can write the firehouse. You can submit something to them. They're always available. You, you go right online and you can find. You want to write for us? You have something to submit? Boom. Send it in, you know, and 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 launch it and see where it goes. Well, the fire engineering publishes, you know, what they're looking for, how to, how to format your article, because they don't need it like in try college they don't need it like they don't need you to be a typesetter they don't need to be you know they have i, I know this you know same thing with firehouse they have people that do that they want you to write an article and, and they want you to tell a story they want you to tell a story and then if you have some photos to back it up some charts some graphs whatever you have some quotes things like that to back it up now i i, I just want to mention one more time before i talk about this next group there's some people out there john you and i know incredible incredible firefighters and officers you know what they own a moving business they own a they own a lawnmower business they got this here and they have no that's that's what they do they're they're every when they're off they're they're on their side job doing great things for people they're the people you and i call right they're the guys we call to come work on our houses and do things so the, you know i guess the first message out there is you know, you know, you don't have to be into it like some of the other people we know that they live, breathe, and eat it every second of the day, whether in the firehouse or not. We've said it before, when you show up, like Jerry Wells has said, you know, we, we need to be here, be here now. You know, be in a, when you show for the firehouse for drill night. I love that. I love that phrase. Uh, be here now. When you show for your firehouse for drill night or for meeting night or for rig check night at your volley place, commit, be there and, and, and you know, be there now. And when you show for your shift on the career side, be there, you know, I mean, in the evening when you kick it back, that's one thing, you know, so, so, you know, whether those, and that's probably John, now you see, that's the majority of the fire service are hardworking people that on their days off, they either do stuff with their families, you know, on a full-time basis, you know what I mean by that, where they're maybe doing daycare for themselves and things like that, or they're running a side business. And if they're firefighters, they're probably very successful with it. But then there's that group that, you know, the people that, like I said, that we run with, um, when people come and say, how, 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 you know, I've heard them ask you and they ask me, Chief Saka, how did you, how did you get to the point where you're at? And then you go back and you think, God, I started on this. I went, you know, I started as a volunteer. <laughs> I started, I, you know, I was maybe a junior or a cadet or explorer like I did. And then you, you were a volunteer and then you got your career job or maybe the first career job, you went to your second career job. And then you studied, you kept working your way and you fell into writing articles and teaching. And I, I, I'll tell you, I think it's kind of a, it's an addiction. I think teaching to people, writing the things is, is, uh, it, 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 oh, it's like a drug. I mean, you, once you start doing it, you know, and you're out there, you want to see your next publication and you want to go and you want to teach a class and you want to see people come up and go, you know what? I love that idea. I want to bring it back to my fire department and try it. And then you're going, God, I really am making a difference. And, and I, I know I've made a difference for, you know, however long I've been at my fire department, take care of the public and take care of our people. But I just, the adrenaline rush you get with doing that. So, and, and maybe that answer is part of, just part of, you know, we talked about how do you get into the job? And we've done that plenty of times, you know, on this show. But but how do you stay into the job? Because, John, we've seen plenty of people that just, after 20, 25 years, they go, you know, I'm done. And off they go. And and, and God bless you. I, don't, I You know, I'm very partial. I can't think of a better way to serve my master they might be in a firefighter, you know, some people may mm -hmm. feel that way about what they do, but, the, but, but then there's those that go, you know, uh, I, I, I want, I want to do a little bit more, or I want to be engaged a little bit more. And it's out there. There's, there's enough places to go and do stuff. There's enough avenues to take, to get yourself to be involved um, and, and stay tuned up. Right. Like I've always said, and you've, you've, you've quoted me a million times, this little quote, it, it's nothing dramatic. It's a big fire service. It's a big fire service. There's a lot of guys and gals out there, 1.2 million and over 40,000 fire departments. 
from volunteer to part pay to combo to people that are bunking in the firehouse to people that are career people working 76 hours a week and it's a big fire service and whatever arena it is whatever venue it is that you work you're a career firefighter in los angeles county you're a volunteer in the state of maine in in a very rural area you're a paid on call guy in massachusetts whatever it is i i like to use the term you know just pour yourself into it you know and i know guys that are volunteers that that love the job and and live it and drink it and breathe it every day and they go on 112 runs a year and they got three rigs the 1957 the 1978 and the 1983 and they just and they just love it more than life itself and then there's guys that that are in career departments that teach at the county training academy and they love the career aspect of it and and they're into the unions and they're and they're into you know that the IFF and, and all the all the all the job related career related stuff. Then there's the guys that are in the in a in a part paid part volunteer. I was just up in Geneva, New York, and it's got they got career people there, and they got a big a big lineup, a big roster of career of volunteer firefighters as well. Two firefighters across two firehouses across the street from each other, both staffed by paid people. And then when they do get a call, the volunteers are called in like like ordinary volunteers everywhere else, and they they man and staff the other rigs. And additionally, this same place, Geneva, New York, has bunkers. They got five or six bunks in the firehouse that there's people that live there. That's their home. They park outside. They got a bedroom there. They got a kitchen. They work out. They hang out, watch TV. So they almost have like three elements of the the fire service that all work in conjunction with each other. And everybody does something a little bit different. The guys that bunk there, you know, going to school or working. The guys that are career, that's their job. They're feeding their family. The guys that are volunteers. Work down a block at the hardware store. They couldn't be more different from each other. But when the bells ring or the toes go off, they're all back there together, working together. And that's what's great about the fire service. There are so many different ways you can contribute. There's so many different oh, God. Call them jobs, call them positions, whatever you want to call them. There's so many different ways that you can jump into the fire service and be a part of it. <coughs> that That's what's great. Everybody's contribution is valuable. And at all, and everybody's contribution helps somebody else along the road and helps the, not only a community, but somebody else in the volunteer fire department might say, man, I love, I remember Don Franz. Don Franz is retired now from Garden City. He was a career man, but he was a volunteer in Mineola when I was a young volunteer there. And man, Don Franz was the man. He was the man. Oh my God. If you could be like, you could never be like Don Franz. And frankly, I don't think I ever even got, and I don't think I ever got near where Don Franz was. He could build anything, fix anything, do anything. He was great with tools, with driving, with strategy. He was like one of my one of my young idols when I was a young volunteer firefighter. He inspired so many people. I know he inspired me, you know, and I don't know where that inspiration stopped because I met so many other great guys along the way, like Vinny Dunn and Tom Brennan and Richie Botto, God rest his soul. This it's one of the chauffeurs in 11 truck when I was a young fireman in 11 truck. I mean, I could go on and on. And each one of those people had dramatically different roles in the American fire service, but they each had a, a, a gigantic impact on the people around them. You know? Well, and you, and I was just going to say this, you said just a second ago that, you know, helping each other and helping other people, and, and you just alluded to it perfectly. I, I, I was waiting to jump in there with this is say, you and I, if, if we want to look at how we got where we're at, we got where we're at because of other people. Y- yes, we had, I think, you know, you have to have the inner drive and you have to have that pursuit, you know, pursuit of, of other things and wanting to be able to do this and that, so on and so forth. But Oh my holy God, you and I have talked about our mentors and the people that influenced our career. And we say in class, every one of us that's anywhere, anywhere in the fire service, whatever your role is that's successful, got there with the help of other people. If you if you th- I, and, and I think some of the greatest, the Vinnie Dunn's, you know, the Alan Brunacini's, the the Leo Stapletons, the Tom Brennan's, you know, those guys, we could go on and on. Each and every one will would sit back and tell you about the people that impacted their career and got them to go to do this or do that or just you know what I'm saying and, and the influencers you know the influencers like the question I would have for people you know that are on the job is who are who are you and who are you impacting around you and who are you influencing you know are you are you are you are you doing it just by being into the job and having a great attitude and showing up at your volunteer place or your part time or career place and doing a great job and being into it when you're there. Or you're doing it by doing that and maybe you're teaching and you're doing things and you're writing or whatever. You know, are you are you working hard to make a difference? Are you one of those that that's that's just the influencers that I guess what's the question? What will they say about you after you're gone? 
You know, right. what will they say about right. you after you're like, it's always many, a great measuring stick, you know? Oh, how many times are we talking about these people have been in our career? Some of them, we always say, Oh, God rest, you know, God bless him. He's gone. He's been long gone. And I do, I sit there and think about the people where you and I wouldn't even be talking right now if it wasn't for some people in my life. I don't know what right. I'd be doing. Right. You, you know, know, we're all, we're all steady in the ladder. We're all steady in the ladder for some people ahead of us and for people behind us. We're all part of that chain, you know, and nobody can do it alone. The, the greatest guy, you know, the greatest chief, you know, if you ask him, if you ask, if you ask Leo Stapleton, God rest his soul. If you ask Vinnie Dunn, you know, if you ask these, you know, real legends, current day legends, right? Legends in the fire service. If we asked them, gee, who really had a great influence? You know, Vinny Dunn would come up with a couple of stories about some guys that he knew when he yeah. was young, Vinny Dunn. You know, so would Leo Stapleton. He'd, he'd tell you about some some Boston deputy or some Boston captain of a, of a truck that helped him out someday. And and it, and and and, it go, and if you ask that guy, he'd give you the same answer about a guy in his past. And, and if you ask that guy, it all goes back to, you even say when we teach, I didn't invent too many things. I didn't invent, I don't think I really invented anything. I, I, I put some collections of stuff together that I heard and learned from some other people and maybe put a program together. But most stuff that we're all teaching and learning and teaching and learning and passing on have been passed on from before us and before them and before them. Yeah, they've been updated and changed and modified, you know, as time goes on and things get more modern. But for the most part, we're, we're all just modifiers. We take some stuff, we mix it up bring it up to date a little bit, add a few things and, and off we go, you know? Well, and I think, and I thought of something else while we were talking and I want to do a little draw, a little parallel between uh, my daughter's uh, girls, you know, fast pitch softball team. When I was helping the girls with the college re recruiting part of it, John was being realistic about the college you're looking to go play ball at. Cause a lot of the girls, they, they see, they want to go play for Alabama. I want to go play for Bama or Florida or UCLA, you know, whatever, you know, Arkansas, I want to go play for Michigan and all this. And, and sometimes the hardest thing was to sit there and go with them and their parents. I don't know if that's going to happen. You know, you know, there's, there's division one softball, there's division two, division three, there's NAI, there's, you know, uh, Ju Juco, there's, there's community. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do this. You've been playing your whole life. Do you really want to go sit somewhere in college and sit on the bench for two years, wait to play a little bit, you know, because there's no real big time professional, softball after is a little tiny thing out there so i guess in the fire service too you got to be realistic like i said i don't think age matters i don't think time on a job if you if you if you if you're if you're a 50 year old volunteer and you just got into it and you're into it you know what you've got a long road ahead of you a long life to live you got a lot to do jump in there you know, become like, like we always talk about a student of the fire service and then start teaching, then start writing. You don't have to be 25 years old or 28 years old or 27 fresh out of the academy. If you're into the job, I think you, I, I, there's absolutely no doubt that you can't, you, you can contribute and, and you probably won't even ever know just how much of an impact you've had on people. But I for know. those that are out there looking to write and teach, just be real, realistic about what, what your own, what you're teaching and what you're trying to write, you know, and I, I you and I kind of the, the phrases out there, we get a little wore out, like think out of box. And the other one that I was just gonna get to is stay in your lane, but it's kind of one of those stay in your lanes. If you're not a company officer, don't try to write chief officer stuff. If you don't do hazmat, don't try to write hazmat, find something that you do, whether it's about a prop that you did or whatever. But John, you and I just, I think we just kind of stumbled. We could, it's just like we kept, I think there was a little, you know, adrenaline rush, a little push behind, a little driving force. But like you said, well, I want to write an article. And and I was like, well, I, 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 I started teaching hazmat because I was getting embarrassed on hazmat calls because I, I looked like an ass because I didn't know what I was doing, right? The best way to become a, you know, a more of a professional, more knowledgeable is to actually teach it. And then I started, I, I, my, my chief, Ron Zarzinski, goes, I need you to teach it here for our people. I'm like, okay. And then boom, that just took off. And the more, and all of a sudden that, and then, you know, I ended up, you know, coming up and doing saving our own the same time you do get out alive. And then that just kind of rolled and flipped into something else. And then that got to leadership and got to this and so on and so forth. Cause you know, when people say, so how did you get to where you're at? Somebody just asked that day. And I'm like, well, I started teaching hands, man. <laughs> I started teaching the Academy Essentials. And then my first article was actually on rapid invention, you know, is mostly attitude. And then it was on saving our own. And then Ba 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 ba, and here we are today. When you say, "Look at how we we got here," but I don't, I don't, I, I don't think it's just uh, proprietary. If that's the right way to say that word to us, if you're passionate, 
If you love this job, no matter what your role is, you have something to offer, whether you do something internally for your newsletter, or I like how you said small magazine, WMYF, it's a small magazine. You know, there's only 11,500 people in uniform for New York City, like 5,000 EMS and all that stuff. My ass well, is in-house, small. in-house, in-house magazine. Yeah, yeah. It's the biggest in-house magazine in the world. So that, <laughs> but, well, but, but you're, can, so, you're so, you're so correct. You're so right when you talk about that. And, 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 and that basically that's what my advice would be to anybody. My advice would be, you know what, if you're even toying with the idea, if you're thinking about it on the way to work, if you're thinking about it when you're in a, in a playground with your daughter on the swing, thinking, gee, maybe I should. Should I write about that fire we had the other day? Or ah, maybe I should. Ah, maybe I should. You know what? My answer, jump in. Jump in with both feet. Get online. Figure out who you want to send it to. Well, of course, you know, you got to follow those basic rules. Got to be something you know about. And what better than something you just did? Some job you just had at work. Some fire. Some operation. Some skill that you performed somewhere and, and, and things went well. What a great story to write. Just jump in with both feet. And, and send it in and be ready. Be ready for rejection. Be ready for a while. We don't need that right now, whatever. But if you really want to do it and you stay at it, you, it'll, I, you know what I love? In the past couple of months, I've seen a lot of guys, a lot, more than five or six guys for engineering and firehouse, maybe even elsewhere, on Facebook. Hey, I'm so happy. I'm so proud of my first article. And there they have a little picture of it. They have a picture of the title page and like and the, and the page with one picture of it. And I'm like, damn, I can't even see what the article is. It's so small, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> they were so happy that they took a picture of their first article's title page and, you know, on the cover of the magazine for that month and to show the world. And they put it on Facebook. Look, man, look what I just got. That's a great feeling. And, and more will follow after that, you know? So if you're thinking about it, man, jump in, do it. Well, and it, it used to be just... If you didn't make the hardcover, the magazine, the print magazine, you didn't make it. Well, now with the internet, with web pages, I mean, I know with Firehouse and Fire Engineering, oh my God, there are there's a there's a million places they could publish your article, you know, that the, isn't necessarily in the print copy because they they've been able to expand. And, and to be honest, so many people sit on their phones and sit on their iPads and read stuff at the Firehouse or whatever, so on and so forth. So there's even more ways for you to get your information out there than it was just absolutely, years ago. Absolutely. Yep. You know, so so I so again, if if we look back here as we kind of recap some things, we're talking about, you know, how we got here. So how to get into the job, which we've talked numerous times about how to get into the job. You know, um, you're not gonna you're not gonna get into the job being half ass at it. You're not gonna get into it not showing up. You're not gonna get into it by not learning and expand your knowledge base. You're not gonna get into it if you're not out there with your hands working with the tools and the saws. You're not going to get into the job, you know, by just, I'll just say it again, but just half-assing it. You, you've got to be into it. Whether that's just like John said, you show up at your volunteer place or your part-time place or your full-time place. And when you're there, you're there, man. You're committed. You work your ass off. You do everything you can to contribute. When you go home, you can turn it off. Nobody cares. You can turn it off and go back and do, do lawn mowing and everything else. As Jerry Walls would say, be here now when you're there. Or you can take it to that next level, start writing, start teaching, start teaching locally, start teaching some college programs. You see a fire department have a weekend thing, you know, say, hey, I'd like to, you know, can I teach my class or teach my my classroom or hands-on or whatever. And the next thing you know, you got an article or two out there, you start teaching at one of the bigger conferences. And then from there, it's just, it kind of, it's all, it's all up to you where you want it to go and how you want it to go. And then, and then, and then get it and then just stay, stay dialed in you know, watch the, watch the videos, read the articles. Uh, you you got to be into this job to be great at it. There's a lot of people that are, that are good at it. And there's some that are okay. There's a lot that are very good at it, but to be great at it, you really have to be into it and be, be looking for ways to gain new knowledge, uh, to improve your skills base and, uh, you know, start looking at those mentors, start looking at the people around you. Uh, you know, we talk about people that are mentors of ours that, to be honest, we've never met. We just love what they've done as leaders, as, as contributors with the army, with the Marines, uh, whatever. Uh, you know, so find good people to surround yourself with. So, anything else, buddy? Well, uh, nothing much about the topic. I just did want to mention, uh, you know, condolences to Jimmy Smith's family. Jimmy was a deputy, retired deputy chief from uh, Philly Fire Department, wrote for Firehouse Magazine for many, many years. One of my, one of my, you know meeting the same era, one of my co-writers for many years, decades uh, with Firehouse Magazine, and he uh, recently passed away. He was uh, 
he, he was stepping out. He wrote his last article. So oh, it's my last article. I'm, I'm moving on. And I got to tell you, I read his last article later that day. It was on, on Facebook that he had passed away. Oh. It was quite, it, it was touching. Great, great guy. Knew his, knew his stuff. Great chief officer in Philly. Loved sharing his stories uh, in the magazine. His boy wrote a very touching article as well in Firehouse. Uh, and uh, and we're going to miss him. I just wanted to, I wanted to mention him and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, condolences to his family. Very, very good point. A great, great guy. Another one that uh, made a difference in so many lives. Uh, he's another one that never truly, never truly would ever have grasped just how many lives he changed and, and how many lives he impacted. So God bless uh, so we're we're right around the corner from uh, from FDIC, and uh, uh, you know we're 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 doing good. So uh, uh, we want to go ahead and finish things out. Or John, if they want to get a hold of you, Chief John Salka at gmail.com. and I'm Chief Lasky at gmail.com. And uh, we want to thank you for tuning in again. Um, we'll hopefully see a bunch of you in, 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 coming up here really soon in Indianapolis for FDIC. We end all of our shows. Uh, and every one of our shows with uh, this message. And that is, please keep the men and women in the armed forces in your thoughts and prayers. And remember, never forgetting means never forgetting. Be careful. God bless you. And we'll see you soon.